Um, alright. Let's talk about the top 10. Let's talk about the top 10. Korean top 10 is so f***ing sick, and the best part is... He's probably gonna go up. <laughs> Dude, f***ing Kadoran. It's crazy that he was top 10, and some of his best recent results weren't even in the period. What what was um the name of the turn? Wave Dash. Like, Wave Dash was huge. Uh, Hbox win is huge. Yeah, I think Kadoran can only go up. And it's funny, by the way, let's go ahead and just say... I'm gonna, I'm gonna hearken back, that's the word, right? Hearken to a moment on Summit commentary where it was like me. It was actually three spacey mains and a Falcon main. It was me, Brandon, and Phil, three spacey mains, and Slime, who's a Falcon player. And this is ironic because Brandon, who's one of the spacey mains, and me were like, dude, you know, I actually don't think Marth beats uh, spacey's that bad. I think that matchups, those matchups are actually kind of even at high level. And Slime was like, you guys are fing capping. What are you talking about? And I was, we were like, what do you mean? And he's like, every single upset that ever happens in the Marth Spacey's matchups is always the Marth upsetting the Spacey and never vice versa. Ever, 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 ever. And I was like, hmm, that's a good point. <laughs> and like this, you know what I'm saying? Like Kadoran having winning records on Fiction, Mango, and Cody makes me feel like Marth beats Spacey's. Not that, no, nothing against Kadoran. I'm not, not, not saying anything about Kadoran uh, and his skill level. I just feel like I see a statistic like this and I'm like, huh, there's like a trend, right? Like, <laughs> like maybe Levin was right. <laughs> uh, anyway, going on. So yeah, I think Kadoran actually is probably going to move up next rankings, but we'll see what happens. None. None? Mm, none in an incredible period. And I think the funny thing about none is that none is probably a really good example of somebody remember how we were talking someone brought up in chat a croik or whoever we were talking about uh we were talking about examples of cases where people feel like they're not playing well and they enter a tournament and then they do bad and then they get penalized because they did bad and then retroactively they say oh i shouldn't have gone to that tournament i shouldn't have entered i should have dropped out right so like that whole point it's really funny because none is a great, great, great example. Perhaps the best example of that, of like a counter example to that. Because I know none really well at this point. Um, I stayed with him a night and I met his child at Get On My Level. None at all of these events was like, man, I really haven't been playing much. I've been working on the house. I've been taking care of Junior because he's on summer vacation, uh, blah, blah, blah. Like I really haven't had that much time to, like if you look at none's stream, None's been like less active on Twitch than even I have, right? Like none hasn't even been streaming that much. He hasn't been grinding as much. And all of these events, he was like, I think I'm kind of, I'm, I'm going to probably shit the bed. Like, I don't think I'm going to do that good, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and he like kind of overperformed his expectations at all of these. You know what I'm saying? None probably was surprised at each of these events that he did as good as he did. Um, talking to him. But yeah, I mean, he was incredibly consistent. And the funny thing is, he didn't go to that many events, but he also did have a lot of sets. Because remember Smash Summit? Remember when he fought Laud like three times? So it's funny because his tournament sample size isn't huge, but his anyone who went to Smash Summit, and especially people like Nun and Laud, who had to fight through the gauntlets and all that, they actually got a lot of sets. So their data sets are actually kind of big. And in spite of that, Nun still had a really good data set. It is, uh, or, 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 or a really good uh, performance for, for his data set, right? None, um, probably, you know, there's maybe an argument that he could have been above Laud, but I, maybe not, I guess Laud had the Zane win. Man, none almost had, no, none, none almost had a Zane win in that fucking pool. None, Laud did have the Zane win, which was, which was crazy. Mango win, Kadoran win. Oh yeah, and the Leffen win. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's too much. That's too much. The funny thing is Laud didn't have an H-Box win, huh? I guess he didn't. Cause like, oh, my space they sucks. were all online. Oh, that's weird. I, it's weird because I think of Laud and Laud versus Hbox as this like, so this is the point I was making yesterday, which was like, we as Melee community members, we have these ideas of these um, rivalries or these records one way or the other uh, in our heads. But then you're like, oh, but wait a minute, that was actually back in December. Or you're like, oh, wait a minute, that was online. Because like to me, I'm like, Laud Hbox, that's a sick rivalry. But then I'm like, oh, well, I guess all those sets were online, so none of them can count it, huh? So it's kind of weird when you think about it that way. So Laud, yeah, Laud, uh, dude, I, f I forgot about the Leffen thing. That shit was crazy. It's crazy because it's Leffen. I I'm sure Armada gets enough of this. I'm sure Armada gets people in his chat that he instantly bans, right? There's gotta be, I don't know, I don't watch Armada streams. 
because I'm not really a Super Super Mario 64 guy, but I'm sure people show up and they're like, yo, what do you think about, what do you think about Lot 311? That's crazy, right? He forced on him, that's crazy. You did it with Peach, you said it was impossible. What do you think about that? Also, we beat Hungrybox. And I'm sure this happens every fucking day and Armada's really sick and tired of it. So I'm not going to contribute to that, oh, but I am. Socks. Um, <laughs> um, and I think that it's a, a, a solid evidence that matchups matter less in Melee than people... Dude, I will always remember, just a little Tove tangent here, I was talking to a Peach player named Azusa back in 2017, 2016, 2017, after Armada switched to Fox. And I was asking Azusa, what do you think about that? Armada says Peach can't do it at the top level. Are you going to switch? Because you're a Peach player and you're like top 60 right now, top 70 in the world. Are you going to switch for the sake of your results? And Azusa was like, you know, I think Melee is such a difficult game. And I think there's so much you can do as a player that like matchups are so, like matchups are 1%. And 99% of it is how good you are as a player. And, like, I think that, like, there's so much more I can do as a Peach before I ever need to think about switching characters. And that really, him saying that to me really influenced how I think about, like, he was, like, he literally said, I think every top tier matchup is even. Like, every single top tier matchup is f basically 50-50 at the end of the day. And I felt like, huh, that mentality, as it turned out, held up even to the top five level. I thought at the time, I was like, is saying this because he's top 70 and he thinks he should get to top five in the world before thinking about switching off his character. It turns out that should apply so much further beyond what we even thought at the time. Plup at seven, not a ton to say here. I feel like Plup is uh, another player who like probably, I don't know, could have gone up based on if he was like a little bit more active. One CEO, but like, it's kind of awkward that even CEO wasn't really a good tournament for him because, like, he just got a Magi loss. That's kind of sad when you win the event, but it's, like, bad for your career because his best win was... Did he even... I guess he did beat Hungrybox. So that's good. He got a Hungrybox win, but he also got a Magi loss, you know? So that's kind of awkward. I don't know how much that's counted. Second at Summit was incredible. Genesis was an underperformance because it's 13th, but, like, he lost to J-Muck in Losers, so... You know, how Jmook and, or sorry, I lost to Jmook and winners and Ginger and losers, which is not even that bad. I guess the only thing is that the people, like, this is where you have to be so, this is where the quality of your losses and shit like that is really going to start applying. There's probably a world where you can put Plup over Amsa, but at the same time, I don't know, man. Amsa's losses were just probably better. Amsa didn't lose to anybody outside of the top 10, I don't think. Omoki, I guess? Polish? Oh, Josh, man. I forgot about Josh, man. Yeah, in that case, there probably is an argument that um, that you could put Plup over Amsa. But okay, I mean, this is obviously going to be a, a, a tier where everything's a little bit interchangeable. And I think the thing you got to realize is that when you get to this point in the rankings, the numbers are so close to the number one. Like, okay, the difference between the number 48 and the number 47, that doesn't feel like a big difference. Oh, right? my basic socks! Or 46 and 47. But the difference between six and seven feels huge because you're so close to the number one. When in reality, it's still just one spot, and that could have been swayed by a tiny, tiny, tiny differential. One thing I will say, I feel like for AMSA and for Plup, like this whole this this whole tier of players, like, it's such a fucking, yeah, it's such a fucking crapshoot, and you get so, yeah, you're gonna get so caught up in the fact that you're so close to the number one, and that every 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 spot is just gonna feel so impactful. When, when really these are decided on a razor's, a razor's edge, right? Like, again, if you look at the PG stat score, 94.4, 94.9, like, I don't know. There's so much you could do. Even with the same data set, if you weigh one thing over another ever so slightly, it's going to it's gonna completely change. And then it's like, how do you weigh a loss versus a loss to, to, to Polish? Are you counting that as a loss to number 19? Or are you counting that as a loss to someone who's top 11 or top 12 in the world? Because that's where Polish was. Um, on the last rankings, right? So there's 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 even even among a loss to the same player, like even taking a loss to the same player. So like Polish is a good example of this. How do you weigh a loss to Axe, right? Let's say uh, let's 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 hypothetically say Amsa lost to Axe or something. Are you gonna super duper 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 penalize him because he because Axe was number twenty nine, or are you gonna be like, well, no, I mean that's Axe, and I mean we don't we know that <laughs> Axe is fucking cracked as shit, right? Like. How do you weigh that as a, as a panelist? Like it's it's at the end of the day, it's it's kind of subjective. Amsa, I think, will will move up in future rankings. 
Although Double Down was the last tournament of this of this of this ranking, but I'm waiting for Amsa to win one, man. I'm I'm waiting for Amsa to fucking win one. So now we got Levin. Levin, man, Levin probably could have gone up. I don't know. I think Battle of BC was fucking huge. Levin never lost to Hungrybox. Levin kind of shat on Hungrybox. Who did he lose to at Summit? He lost to like Mango and Chainlink and Lod? And Hbox lost to what were his bad losses? Kalindi was one. S2J, none. I mean, did he go to more events? 90, again, this is so, so 96, we get, you gotta look at these. 96.9 versus 97. Oh, damn, I might've put Leffen over Hbox actually. Hbox did go to more. See, this is what I'm saying. Like, hold up. The, 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 again, not to, I'm not trying to fucking put Mango on blast because I do agree with Mango's point. I'm, I'm, I'm literally like, I agree with this. You should be rewarded for going to more. But I think they are because Hbox went to more. <laughs> like, is that kind of low key why he's higher? Like, he did get rewarded for Gordon War. That straight up happened. Levin went to three events and Hbox got six. Levin got ninth, but who did he lose to? He lost to Lot and Zane. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, Summit. Summit he lost to. Sorry. Who did he lose to at Summit? Mango and Losers. Winners he lost to. Jamo. That's something I need to. That's something we need to talk about, by the way. This number doesn't fucking matter. This has always been. I've been on Power Rankings panel since the beginning of the time. You're placing. Say it with me, chat. You're placing doesn't matter the number doesn't fucking matter that is it is arbitrary the number is relevant insofar as it's how many sets you got to play at the tournament to determine the wins that you accrued at the tournament but the number doesn't fucking matter this 13th but losing to like what matters is he lost to jmook and ginger and i don't it, it shouldn't it and and this was always on every pr panel i've ever been a part of the number doesn't matter Every single PR panel I've been a part of, which is the the, Seattle, the Washington PR panel. Every time I've contributed to the NorCal PR panel, every time I've been I've contributed to the MIOM rank, and we were instructed back when we did MIOM rank because we got the fucking survey uh, and we we fill out our ballots. Your placing was provided as a as a as a reference, but it but it's you're supposed to weigh the wins and the losses. You're only supposed to weigh the wins and losses. I don't know if they're doing it differently for this shit. I don't know if we have any melee stats in the chat that can help me out on this one, but the numbers shouldn't fucking matter. Um, these two were incredibly close and Hungrybox, um, on average performed worse, I would say, but on the flip side, uh, on when I say on average performed worse, because I think he has worse losses. If you talk about the quality of player, uh, matchup that he's, that he's winning versus losing, um, that, that probably skews a little bit higher for Leffen who didn't have any losses outside of the top 10, only lost to Jmook and, um, like Jmook, Laud, you know, players like that. Uh, but on the flip side, you've got, you've got Hbox and, and, and he's ranked higher, so... Yeah, I don't know. I don't buy it. Let's talk about the top three. We got Jmook, which I mean, not much to say about Jmook. I think that he, he could have, he could have been, you know, he could have moved around. He didn't win anything. And this is where I think some people are going to come out and they're going to say, and see, this is, this is, I'm going to bring up a new thing that you could be mad at. Someone could come out and say, well, look, Jmook didn't win any tournaments. Like Mango, Mango brings up 2018. I won two super majors, but got third on the year. Jmook won zero super majors. He won zero. I won zero super majors and Jmook won zero super majors. Why is no one talking about how me and Jmook are tied for super majors one? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, there's so many things you can take and be mad at. And uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. If you are the sort of person that cares about tournaments one, then you got to put Jmook at fifth and you got to move left in an H-box up. But on the flip side, Jmook's got a winning record versus Zane. Um... He's got a, you know, his only real, I mean, he, he, he was ridiculously consistent. I mean, he basically had no, uh, no, no bad losses, really. It's just, it's the kind of thing where I feel like Jamuk, uh, I mean, I'm not, I have, I have no complaints about him being put third. I think third is um, very fair. I think it definitely is on the high end of where I expect him. I kind of expected Jamuk to be fourth or fifth. And I expected Leffen and, I expected Leffen Hbox to be third and fourth in some order. And I expected Jamuk to probably be fifth. But at the same time, I mean, a winning record versus Zane is 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 nothing to shake a stick at. And I think that uh, I mean, this is just one of those years and one of those ranking seasons where where there's a lot of variables. I mean, when having a winning record against the best player in the world is 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 incredible. To me, uh, yeah, I think this is completely fair. And then I think the most interesting part, man, I was thinking they might put Cody over Zane for a second. And I think that if Phantom was part of the ranking period, they probably would have. Yeah, I don't know. Cody, uh, Cody was real close. I'm actually surprised the PG stat scores were closer. Um, but to be fair, I didn't pay that close of attention to the spreadsheets. So 99.9 basically means everyone. This basically means everyone or almost everyone agreed. Zane should be number one. Um, damn, I was, I was, I was kind of thinking Zane might not. 
because he, uh, I don't know. End of the day, he won both Genesis and Pound, so that was huge. But he came real close. At the end, he came real close to losing it. Like, and I think right now, right now, Cody's number one. Like, right now, if I had to see the Super Major, I'd put, I'd put IBW seated number one. Cody number one for sure. I don't know if this will remain the case. Obviously, there's a lot of majors coming up. There's going to be a lot of majors, especially in December. So the end of the, the end of the ranking period is going to be insane because there's going to be main stage, there's going to be world tour, there's going to be Panic Club. But I will say this: finally, Zayn gets to be number one. This is something I wanted to talk about and stress from the beginning of the stream. This guy has had people calling him probably the number one player for like two and a half years now. That's crazy. There has never been, just as there's never been a jump from never having been ranked in your entire career to being top three in the world, that's never happened. Probably never will happen again. There's no one has ever gone from unranked outside of the top 100 to number three in the world, top three in the world. Likewise, there has never been a player where people were saying, this guy's the best player in the world. And people have been saying this shit for two and a half years, almost three years, more than two and a half years. People have been saying this shit. I remember doing a Scar and Toph show before the pandemic in the Twitch office. And we were saying Zane's the best player in the world right now. And he's been number fucking six for two and a half, two years. I'll say almost three years. That has never happened. I cannot even imagine what that's like. To be that good and to and to feel like, man, I'm probably the best, but like I've never actually gotten the recognition for that achievement for that long. That's crazy. I mean, I feel like that would be such a burden to bear to just have to fucking sit there and remember that at the end of the day, you're just number six in the world for like nearly three years. It's insane. To me, that would be such a, that would be so fucking annoying. You know what I mean? And, uh... To finally be able to wake up and be like, yeah, I am that bitch has got to be such a fucking weight off his chest. And so I just wanted to congratulate Zayn for finally having the rank that people were saying he probably should have for nearly three years, which is incredible.